I like to read through the King James Bible with the one year chronological Bible plan in the YouVersion app. This year, I'm using the New Living Translation by Tyndall House Publishers just for variety and to see what other, what a different translation says, how it says things differently. And it is, it is just so interesting. Um, Tyndall House Publishers is the publisher chosen by the Museum of the Bible to partner with on some projects. So I said, oh, okay, there's some synergy there. So I'm going to try the New Living Translation. As you know, there are just so many different translations, but we're going through the Bible this year using the New Living Translation. And of course, when I find something that really sparks me to include in Bible study instead of just the d devotion of reading a passage every day, then that is a good starting point to go back and get my King James Version and do the word studies and use the interlinear um, tools and the reverse interlinear tools, all those tools, language tools to do in-depth research. So it's really creating a nice little process, a nice cycle of thought and meditation. Um, when I'm reading something that sparks during the devotion, for whatever reason the spark is, I like to make a note of that verse. So this video will go through the verse sparks from day 131 to 147 in an attempt to describe what the spark was and having to look uh, and have something to look back on as I grow in grace. My name is Lorinda and I use the name Sister Admin on the web because my assignment is an administrator and an encourager. And I especially like to encourage to improve the quality of life by taking advantage of opportunities and by reading the word because it is a beautiful love letter from the father to his children. And it says in Ephesians 2 and 7 that in ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. And Romans 15 and 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. And hope sounds like encouragement to me. So the word of God is a big part of the reason we have hope. So let's get started with the spark verses. This should be a lot of fun. Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. This sparked for me because every day I want to be on task. I want to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing to make sure I am in the will of God. And this verse just really, really sparked for me. Day 132. Our lives are in his hands and he keeps our feet from stumbling. Oh, that's just beautiful. Day 135, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on firm footing. Who? Who doesn't want clarity? Who doesn't want to be sure that what we are doing is in the will of God? Because no matter what we do, the will of God will be done. So I want to be on that side of history. Day 138. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. Amen. It's all about his will, his sovereign will. Day 141. The entire building was completed in every detail by mid-autumn in the month of Bull, during the 11th year of his reign, so it took seven years to build the temple. Now, this part for me, because it gave these details like in the month of Bull and 
seven years to build the temple. We know, all know how prevalent and important sevens are in the Bible, right? So this could probably jump off a Bible study about the months, the Jewish months, and see what that was and see if it is mid-autumn like we think of it or if it's something different. Day 144. May he give us the desire to do his will in everything and to obey all the commands, decrees, and regulations that he gave our ancestors. That just sounds like a beautiful prayer. Day 145, and I put this little dot here to let me know that I had more than one spark on this day. This is the account of the forced labor that King Solomon conscripted to build the Lord's temple, the royal palace, the supporting terraces, the wall of Jerusalem, and the cities of Hazar, Megiddo, and Gezer. So the thing that struck me here was this word, conscripted. This is the New Living Translation version. I would want to see what does the King James Version use for this word, and then what is the Hebrew word for it, and what does that mean? Conscripted is, is like slaves, forced labor. Forced labor. He, he, so slaves built the temple. You know, this is like, wow, I didn't know that. All of King Solomon's drinking cups were solid gold, as were all the utensils in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. They were not made of silver, for silver was considered worthless in Solomon's day. Okay, now that was interesting. The king made silver as plentiful in Jerusalem as stone and valuable cedar timber was as common as the sycamore fig trees that grew in the foothills of Judah. So what this, this reminded me of is our government printing so much money that it makes the money that we do have less valuable. So the more exclusive something is, the more scarce something is, the more value it has, right? So this was speaking to the idea, along with the last verse, that if something is so plentiful, it's, it's worthless. Like, how essential is air? But we don't have to pay for it. How essential is water? We don't have to pay for that. But, you know, we do in bottled water and in municipalities and things like that. But those, those things are just readily available and free and they don't cost anything. But other things that require us to do something for them or exchange money for them, like, you know, a house or clothes or or jewelry or, or gold, it takes a lot of effort to get those and they're scarce. So this, this verse here just really sparked for me. Day 146. Elahoras and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha, were court secretaries. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was the royal historian. So this part for me, because I know my assignment is as an administrator. And these sound like my kind of dudes. Like we, we could probably get together and share some tips and tricks, okay? Day 147. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Ooh, now that's a power pack right there. And I know this verse from the King James Version says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 
the issues of life. And this is saying the course of your life. So that's an interesting difference between the two translations. That's my commentary from day 131 to 147. And just another way for me to engage you with the word and share and create a record so that I can look back on it and other people can look back on it as I grow in grace. And may you do just fame.